Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our review of the new NVIDIA Titan V graphics card that you see sitting here. This is the uh, new flagship, high performance, uh, not gaming really, but more for compute and uh, uh, rendering workloads, graphics cards. In the first video and review, we looked at gaming performance. Even though NVIDIA doesn't target this at gamers, we looked at performance and came away fairly impressed uh, with the performance of the GV100 GPU, even though the price made it unreasonable for any type of gaming situation. Uh, what we're looking at today is more of our compute style benchmarks. So this is more in line with what people are supposed to be using the Titan V for. We'll look at Luxmark, V-Ray, um, Sysoft Sandra has some really good compute based benchmarks in there as well. We don't yet have uh, a benchmarking methodology to address the tensor cores in here, we're, we're actively working on that, trying to use the NVIDIA Cloud uh, type stuff to figure some of that out. We'll follow up with that at a later point. Uh, but the even if you aren't focused on tensor core stuff, if you're looking at just single precision versus double precision, uh, the, the Volta-based GPU has a lot of performance for you to get to. All right, so a quick refresh, 5,120 CUDA cores, but 2,560 double precision cores, so a one-half ratio for double precision compute, as opposed to the Titan XP, this guy back here, who is based on GP102, uh, has only 132nd. So if it has 3,840 CUDA cores, um, then you're looking at like 120 or so uh, double precision effective compute cores. So you, you, you can kind of get an idea of, of how important or how drastic this performance difference is gonna be. Um, let's just look through some of these benchmarks, right? Luxmark is an OpenCL uh, path tracing rendering application. Uh, the Titan V compared to the Titan XP is 1.78, 1.78 times faster, so 78% better. And it is over 100% faster than the Vega 64, right? So again, a, a really good start out of the gate. You're talking about 80 to 100% faster than the other top options in the market from NVIDIA and for uh, AMD. Uh, Cinebench is in here as well. The, this is an OpenGL-based test. Interestingly, no real no performance difference between the Titan V and the Titan XP, although they still uh, have an advantage of about 50% or so over the AMD card. AMD, NVIDIA has always had kind of better OpenGL support, uh, and that's what the Cinebench rendering test is still using. Now, V-Ray is a very popular, very powerful rendering application used for a lot of different, a lot of different applications. Um, it uses CUDA for the NVIDIA GPUs. It uses OpenCL for the AMD GPUs. Uh, and it's probably... Look, based on our results, it looks like it's not as optimized for OpenCL as, as it is for CUDA. Um, the scores for both the NVIDIA parts are significantly faster than the AMD uh, Vega 64 part. It's about 34% advantage to the Titan V versus the Titan XP, but it's 3.3 times faster for the Titan V versus the Vega 64, so a huge jump there. Sysoft Sandra is actually, you know, we typically think of it as a CPU performance testing tool, but it actually has a lot of really good GPU compute based benchmarks in it as well. There's a shader compute benchmark that we've looked at that has both single precision and double precision capabilities in it. In the single precision, as you would kind of expect, the differences are minimal. The Titan V is about 22% faster than the Titan XP and about even with the Vega 64. So, you know, AMD does pretty good there. And we see something similar to our gaming performance delta, which makes sense, between the Titan V and the Titan XP. However, if you look at double precision, uh, things change quite drastically, actually. The Titan V is 14 times faster than the Titan XP in double precision compute. And we go back to those co uh, core counts that we talked about before, you know, 120 versus 2560 in double precision, that's where that comes into play. And it's still, the Titan V is 6.6x faster than the Vega 64 or the Frontier Editions, whichever cards you happen to be, to be looking at. Financial analysis is another thing that uses double precision in there. Um, the Titan V is 13.3 times faster than the Titan XP in that workload and 7.9 times faster than the Vega 64, another huge, huge performance capability. And if we look at scientific compute, which is another test that Sandra offers, they look at in-body simulation, fast Fourier transformations, matrix multiplies, all that fun stuff that you learned when you were in college. Um, the Titan V is 10 times faster in in-body simulation than the Titan XP, 
and 5.66 faster than the AMD card. Fast Furrier fast Furrier transformation is kind of a wash across the board. Uh, well, in terms of single precision, it's 43% faster the Titan V is than the XP, but dead even with the Vega 64, and then Matrix Multiply an 11. X multiple edge for Titan V over Titan XP and 5.5 over AMD. These are huge margins that we're talking about. You know, 14, 13, 10, 11 times faster going from the Titan XP to the Titan V shows the inherent advantages you get going from a quote unquote full beefy GPU, right, that includes full performance double precision as opposed to something like the Titan XP that was basically, you know, hamstrung with a 132nd ratio on, on, uh, on its double precision performance. Uh, there was one more test in um, Sandra we looked at, which was image manipulation. It was measured in gigapixels per second. This is actually the one place where the Vega 64 had the advantage over the Titan V by 22%, even though the Titan V had an advantage over the Titan XP by 65%. So clearly, in that particular workload, the AMD architecture is actually doing better than expected or better than in other places. Uh, we did run SpecView Perf. These numbers are little bit less interesting. We basically see performance parity between the Titan V and the Titan XP. Um, and because a lot of these are OpenGL based, you'll see an advantage for the Titan cards over the AMD Vega cards. Uh, and what I take away from this at this point is that for, for those particular professional workloads, um, they tend to be more single threaded, or I'm sorry, single precision based. So, um, that without optimizations in this driver, because there is no professional level Titan or no professional level Volta GPU really out in the market yet, that kind of would be a Quadro branded part, there's probably a little bit of flexibility uh, and improvement that we'll see with Volta, with GV100 in these uh, applications if NVIDIA decides to do it, probably on the order of 20 to 40%, something in line with our single precision, our gaming results, and stuff that we've seen between uh, and our other compute based workloads uh, that compare the Volta and the Pascal-based versions of these Titan cards. And uh, finally, well, not finally, with folding at home, molecular dynamics test. This is an oldie but a goodie, right? Some a, a great use of testing of GPU compute power and single-threaded performance. Um, the Titan V and Titan XP are essentially identical, uh, while the AMD Vega 64 falls behind by about 11% compared to the Titan V. The double precision, again, is where the Titan V really stands out. 4.95x better than the Titan XP, and 3.56x better than the AMD Radeon Vega 64 graphics card. So improvements there. For mining, we did take a look at this. There are still a lot of people trying to figure out what the best optimizations are, what the best applications are for Titan V at this point. Um, a quick look at an Ethereum mining basically gives the, um, the Titan V an 80% performance advantage in Ethereum mining in terms of hash rate over both the Titan XP and the Vega 64. So it does appear to be the best mining GPU we have seen, but at a 300, or 300,000, at a $3,000 price tag, you know, your, your return on investment is still gonna be pretty big, right? Because you're paying, you know, more than, you know, almost three times as much as you're paying for this, um, but you are getting 80% better performance, right? Now, in terms of power consumption, they're about equal. So there is gonna be an algorithm that gives you, you know, where these two, uh, uh, lines cross, right, in terms of profitability, where this one is more advantageous. We're going to do some more digging on that type of stuff. If you're interested in it as well, let us know. Um, but it looks like an 80% edge for the Titan V over the Titan XP and uh, the Vega 64. So that's where we're at for now. We are going to come back and check in on uh, the Titan V one more time when we look at Tensor core performance. That's really even beyond single precision, double precision, all that. This is getting into the, the, the mechanics of machine learning and the advantages that tensor cores offer over standard CUDA cores uh, for that particular workload. Um, at $3,000, not didn't make sense as a gaming card. If you were doing anything that we talked about that's in that double-digit multiple improvement over the Titan XP. If you're doing financial an, uh, analysis, if you're doing you know, in-body simulation, general matrix multiplication and math functions, the double precision capability of this card is blowing away the other two cards in our comparison. Um, so now you can start to justify that $3,000 uh, if you go make you know, your uh, request for proposal to your boss or your, 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 the head of your director at school, right? And those types of things. You can find a use for that card for there. So um, Titan V, impressive in this space. 
We'll follow up more with the Tensor Core stuff, and uh, make sure you check out the gaming section that we did prior to this as well, and we'll see you soon, guys. Thanks. <laughs>